coming up in Ms. Tastic. If you're a teacher, make sure you head on over to the Ms. Artastic Teachers Pay Teachers Store by searching Ms. Artastic on TPT to find hundreds and hundreds of art lesson plans and resources that you can use in your classroom. They're all easy to use, kid friendly, engaging, and fully prepped so you can say bye bye to the stress and hello to success. Now let's head on in to this episode. Hi there, I'm Ms. Artastic, and today we're going to explore and learn about the element of art form. We're also going to be doing a drawing and an artwork for the element of art form, and I am so excited to share it with you. Element of art form refers to an object that has three dimensions, meaning it has length, it has width, and it has depth. So, did you know? That form could also be implied or actual. That means that there could be an actual form, such as my container with wax crayons, right? It has three dimensions because it is a three-dimensional physical object. That means if we make a sculpture, um, such as the ones behind me, this is one of the sculptures I have made, that is the element of art form because it's an actual sculpture. However, you could also create form in paintings. So we can create the idea or implied form by using value, by using um, techniques such as overlapping or distance or size. Um, we could also create highlights and shadows to make it look as though it has three dimensions, even though it's on a very flat surface. If we look at lots of artworks in art history, they look like three-dimensional objects, like photographs. However, even in a photograph, the, paper, the image is flat. It doesn't actually have three dimensions. That is implied, not actual. So actual, a real object, or implied, the appearance that it has three dimensions. Now that is a cool trick that artists do. Um, to give the viewer a sense of three dimensions, even though there is no three dimensions, it's two dimensional. So that's kind of like a magic trick that artists have, that ability to create the illusion of depth on a two dimensional surface. So let's dive in and take a look at some geometric and organic forms. With the element of our form, there are two different types of form. There are geometric forms, which are forms that are man-made. They are geometric, such as pyramids, such as prisms, such as spheres. There are also uh, forms that are, are organic, and those might be bunnies, they might be a tree, um, they could also be, what else? A parrot. Those are all things that are forms but are either geometric or organic. Now let's head on over to the art studio where we're going to draw a cute geometric form and then we're going to practice making an organic form on a two-dimensional surface using value to help us create that sense of depth. And we're gonna be creating a pig. So let's head on over to the art studio and let's make some art. All right. Let's draw our cute geometric form. All right, so we're gonna draw a rectangular prism and a pyramid. So we're gonna do one, two, three dots in a V shape. And then we'll add one more above to make a diamond. So V, one more for a diamond. Then we're gonna connect those dots. We're gonna bring three lines down, so one. And then these two will be shorter and they're gonna end at the same height. Now you can already see 
where are the rectangular is. So now you can imagine if we connect these dots, make this line parallel with this line, this line parallel with this line, that we will have a rectangular prism. Now you can see this line, this line, this line are parallel, this line, this line, this line are parallel. And now we have a rectangular prism. Let's do a pyramid. One dot, one dot below. Now we're gonna make a diamond, but we're gonna put these two much lower. It's like a V with one really tall peak. Let's connect. One, two, three, four. And then one down the middle. And now we have a pyramid. But let's make these cute. So we're gonna draw um, one of the faces, one of the sides. We're gonna draw a circle with a smaller circle in. And then we can color in the dark of the eyes, leaving those little circles white. Line between each eye set. Curve below each of the lines, so the letter U. And one curve line down from each side. Color in the dark of the mouth, leaving those tongues white. Okay, so now we're gonna add a shadow. The square one will be, or the rectangular prism will be have a square, and this one will be a triangle. We're gonna add some hatching lines to shade those shadows. Perfect. Let's color them in. We're gonna pick a color for each of the shapes. We're gonna color them in solid, and then we're gonna add colors on top. Okay, and then on the light side, we're gonna add lines, but I'm gonna leave some white there for some highlights. This one will color in full hue. And then I'm gonna get a gray marker, or you can use, you can use also just a black colored pencil and it, or a black wax pan color on top. I might have to do that. Okay. And then 
this one. Okay, color it in. And on this side we're going to color almost all the way leaving on this side white for the highlights. And then we'll grab our lovely gray and we're going to color on top of the side where there's a <clears throat> cast shadow. Or you can use your black wax crayon or a color pencil if you want to see what black wax crayon looks like. I'm going to grab mine and I'll show you it on top of here. You can just lightly, lightly color and you can see it'll create a shade this way as well. I'm barely, barely, barely touching the paper. And you do the same thing with black color pencil, it doesn't matter what you use. And I'm gonna color in my tongue. And just like that, my geometric forms are done. All right, we're going to make a pig. Let's draw with either a permanent marker, black wax crayon, or black colored pencil. Let's add our first ear. And a nice big circle, oval or circle. And another ear. Another line. We're gonna add an oval for the snout. two nostrils with some ovals. And we'll add two circles for the eyes. And each circle we're gonna do another circle and color in the dark of the eyes, even those smaller circles white. And we'll add a little smiley for the mouth. Let's add a tail to our curve out and over and connect. We'll follow that camera out, over and connect. And we're gonna skip over and add another line that curves up over and connect. And we'll follow up beside it. Up, over, connect. Then coming out like that with zigzags at the end for a cute little tail. Now we're gonna add one, two feet here. One and one just peeking out the back there. We'll color in the bottom. For the hooves, we'll add some zigzags and I like to make them on a curve for grass. With some little clouds in the sky. Okay, now we're ready to paint. So we're gonna do our base color first. I'm gonna dip my brush in water and I'm gonna use tempera paint, but use what you have. And I wanna paint pig white. And the water is just gonna help it move a little bit more smoothly so it doesn't look so dry.
Okay, so we're gonna add highlights and low lights. So first we're going to take our paint. We're gonna mix our white, our pink and our white together to make a tint for the snout. So it's gonna make a light pink. We'll use that on our snout. And then I'm going to add white along the top. Now paint, add it right on the wet paint. white over here, we'll add some thicker white where it's very bright. And then, I'm gonna add black on the bottom, just a little bit. I'm gonna water it down so it's not so strong. Under the snout, along the bottom, under the eyes. and of course on the back legs that are farthest away and now we've created some form it looks more 3d if you want to blend this a little bit and add some more pink and then we're ready to Paint in her press. sky Like that your pig artwork is done well my friend that's it for this episode if you have completed these artworks and you had tons of fun please give this video a big thumbs up to show your appreciation and subscribe to this channel if you complete these works and you snap a picture uh, with your phone whatever device make sure you so share them to social media and take me at Ms. Artastic or use the hashtag Ms. Artastic so that I can check out your completed works. As well, if you're looking for some more art ideas that you can do at home or in a classroom, 
grab my free guide up here. It's super easy to download and check out lots of different art ideas that you can do at home, anywhere, anytime. And if you're wanting to access my art lesson library full of hundreds of different art lessons, make sure you head on over to artastickids.com and join the Artastic Kids online membership so you can make art anywhere, anytime, on any device using some really fun art mediums. See you in the next episode.